please welcome the quadruple threat that is Ryland Clark Neal. Oh, I thank you so much for coming tonight. They asked me to come to Samsung KX and um, chat about Twitter, and I was drunk and said yes. <laughs> um, but no, this is um, it's really exciting actually because when I agreed to it, like a lot of things I've done, we all remember Babushka. Um, <laughs> I didn't really know what it was, um, but I'm, I'm really, really glad I'm here and. Uh, I'm going to be talking about, I love the bush as well, to be fair. Just didn't get the ratings, Karen. No, it's the problem. It's all about the dollar with ITV. Um, so, yeah, I've uh, had a little look through my Twitter timeline. And um, I actually remember the day that I joined Twitter. I had no idea what it was. And it was, I think it was probably 2007 it was. And you, I think I just did what everyone did. It was like, oh, my first tweet. <laughs> you know, thought you were all art. And then... You didn't realise as the years went on how much it would become sort of part of your daily life. And I think I use Twitter for a lot of things other than just tweeting. One, for stalking. Because we all do it. We all love a little stalk, whether it's the ex or the neighbour you don't really like. Um, I use it for that, but I, I get most of my news from Twitter. That's how I find out genuinely what's going on in the world. I get up of a morning, I'd probably say like most people here, I'll look and see what's trending. And I'll see, oh, Ibiza's trending. What's happening? Like you've all probably just seen. And then you see it's football and think, oh, no, it's not, it's not, don't, worry about that. <laughs> don't worry about that. Uh, so I've decided to have a little look through my timeline, which was quite eclectic. Um, but yes, yeah, so we're going to look at my first uh, slide today. And it is uh, what Alex was just, um, Alice, sorry, was just talking about. And it is my header. Um, unfortunately, this isn't a real photo. Um, you might recognize this photo. It was actually Adele in the middle of the other Spice Girls. Um, and I just put my face on top of it because dreams can come true, as Gabrielle once said. Um, so yeah, but one thing I really wanted to talk about this was actually the description. And this is what people pull me up on all the time. And it started off as the joke and still laughing because nearly eight years ago now, I was on a little show called The X Factor um, I know Alice said she's got a friend who's got Deadlock in her Twitter handle. I was actually the official sponsor of Deadlock in 2012. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I did start off as the joke, but the thing was, the reason why I'm still laughing is because I knew I was the joke. I wasn't not in on the joke. I knew exactly what was going on on X Factor. And I learned very quickly on those type of shows that you need to tick a box and you need to be potentially a stereotype of something, and you need to fill a role that they're looking for. Because, yes, a singing competition is a talent show, but it's also a TV show. And the only thing that makes TV shows work is ratings and headlines. And that was my job. And that's why I got chucked out of the hotel after week two for being naked in reception. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy being the butt of jokes. I really, really am, because I um, get to see my bank manager on a weekly basis, and he reminds me that um, it's all worth it in the end. It really, really is. Um, but yeah, uh, I am still laughing, because it is nearly eight years on, and I don't really know how I did it, and I don't know how I'm still here in front of an audience at Samsung KX of people that actually applied for tickets, slash probably got dragged in off the street when no one turned up. Um, <laughs> talking about myself, which is very, very odd, but I'm happy to be the joke. I still like the joke. I'm still in on the joke, um, but believe me, I am still laughing. I am very pleased to say that I've literally just flown in from Glasgow now. We, we finished the first series yesterday, and it's brilliant. So I can't wait for you all to see Ready, Steady, Cook, and it's coming up very, very soon. And obviously, I'll be tweeting the release date when, it, when I'm allowed to. So now I want to talk about on Twitter when things go a little bit wrong. Um, two words, Bake Off. I think we know about this next tweet. Let's have a little look at it. So, do we all remember what Prue did with the Bake Off last year? So you can now schedule tweets where you can say, oh, I'm on air right now, come and join me. You're not, you've done it at 8 in the morning, you've just set it for 9pm, it's one of those. But she was in a different time zone and she'd put 10am rather than 10pm. And I just wanted to highlight Please be careful when scheduling treats, ladies and gentlemen, because it can ruin quite a lot of things. It really, really can. Um, but this is the thing, working on live TV as well, there are a lot of secrets you've got to keep, whether it's live or pre-recorded. Um, and unfortunately, this one didn't work out, but it did make me laugh, and I just wanted to talk about that. Um, 
I used to have to keep a lot of secrets about a show I worked on, and I know I will work on again one day. Um, but I want to move on to the next tweet because my life literally changed with a TV show, and it wasn't X Factor, believe it or not. It was Big Brother. And after I came off X Factor, I was lucky enough to be asked to go and celebrity Big Brother, and I won it. <laughs> Thanks. Um, <laughs> uh, cheers for that. And um, I then won the best thing. I got a job out of it. And um, I wasn't a presenter by any means, and Big Brother took a bit of a risk, and I pretty much got an apprenticeship presenting job on Big Brother. And uh, six, seven years on, I was still there, and I loved it, and it was literally turned into my baby. I got a husband from the show. Um, rule 14 was don't sleep with the housemates, sorry. Um, <clears throat> but I married him, so it was fine. Like, I, got, I got away with it, I got away with it. But I just wanted to talk about how shows like Big Brother can pretty much dominate Twitter. I know we see it a lot with Love Island, it's on at the moment, and it's always like a top trend every time the show's on. But that's where these shows work so well with social, because everyone now can have their opinion straight away. And I do find a lot of people like to jump on each other's bandwagons when it comes down to opinions. So for argument's sake, I saw this tweet from Dawn, who, by the way, genuinely is a massive Big Brother fan and would tweet me daily going, oh my God, can't you do this? Please, can you do that? But she sums it up. She says, the thing is, I've not missed a single episode in 18 years, so it's like losing an infuriating, hilarious, fascinating, darling old chum. Thank you at BBUK and respect to Emma, Ryland, Marcus and Luke and all involved over the years. Bye. And this picture genuinely will haunt me forever because we never knew, genuinely, I'll be completely honest, we never knew it was going. We did not know it was going. We'd heard rumors that they were thinking about it, but we always thought celebrity will stay. Celeb will stay. There's no way that celeb can go. And it was a phone call. I got a phone call the night before it was announced saying it's going. And I'd had no, I genuinely had no words. I mean, in my new house, I built a diary room. This is how dedicated <laughs> I am to this show. This is the truth. I've got a diary room in my house. And two diary room chairs, I chored. But, <laughs> It, it killed me when this show went, but I have got to say something, and that's, I know it will come back. I know for well it will come back. When and how, I don't know, but I know it will come back. But one thing I loved about working on this show was coming off air after watching a show or hosting the show and seeing Twitter, because so many people have got an opinion when it comes down to reality TV. And I know there's a lady here called Karen, and Amri. I know you have been in the Big Brother audience loads of times, and believe me, they've got opinions. Um, <laughs> but that's what I love about the platform, is because I can come off air instantly and know exactly what people think. I know exactly what they think of that interview I've just done. I know exactly why public are outraged at what housemate has said. I know exactly what's going on. And by the time I've got home, it's like I've watched the show, even though I haven't. So basically, in the house, we had a housemate, David Guest. She used to be married to Liza Minnelli. He was alive at that point, God rest his soul. <laughs> but Angie Bowie was in the house as well, and it was when David Bowie had died. So Big Brother called Angie to the house, uh, into the diary room. And as a rule on Big Brother, we let housemates give us two or three things from the outside world that if it happens, we're allowed to tell them. Obviously not things like football results, but like for argument's sake, when I was a housemate, my mum's sometimes not well, so I said, if my mum goes into hospital or anything like that, I want to be told. And that's, you know, a duty of care that we do. And one of the things for Vanjie was obviously if anyone in her family or, or friends had died and David passed away. So she got told by Big Brother in the diary room that David Bowie had passed away. She went back in, saw Tiffany and said, David's dead. And she thought it was David Guest. <laughs> Hence the silent witness moment. <laughs> I was in work in my office and there's about 30 of us in that office and we've got live feeds, we've got screens everywhere where we're watching all the cameras. And we was like, oh, poor Angie, you know, like she's in Big Brother. And we watched her walk out and we watched her start telling Tiffany. And we were like, oh. And then Tiffany broke down and we were like, she's a real big David Bowie fan. <laughs> so we're like, wow, she must have been such a fan. And there was a girl in my office, Nikki, and she was a big David Bowie fan. I even remember turning to Nikki and going, babe, that's a bit excessive. I know you're a big fan, got a toe, but, you know, 
really, really sad. And then she started wailing and we were like, oh God, she really must be like one of those super fans, you know, really, really into it. So we were all in this narrative in our head going, oh, it's really, really sad. But I mean, what a piece of television. Like never knew Tiffany Pollard was such a big David Bowie fan. That is edited. That went on for about an hour, her wailing, before she even hit the garden. And when she went out, none of, none of us had even pieced it together. None of us had even pieced it together. There's 30 of us in that office. And she walked out to the gun and she went, and she just told me Dave is there. And we were like, yeah. And then it was Chris Maloney, of all people, <laughs> him going, what? You are Queenie. And then we clicked and went, no. So we're going, find David, find David, find him on the system, find him on the system. He is under the covers, <laughs> just a face silhouette under a duvet. And they're trying to find David, no one can find him. Tiffany thinks he's dropped dead in the diary room. <laughs> and they do the silent witness, Darren Day holding his hand. He was asleep. It was just, and David guess, God bless him. God rest his soul. I mean, he wasn't the tanned of, of people and he looked pale in that bed. We even thought for one minute, We'd lost him. It was that frightening. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was a moment. And I think that was one of the moments where Twitter is probably the most wonderful thing in the world when you get the memes on a daily basis of, of David's dead. Um, and moving on to something a little bit different. I think no explanation is needed for this next tweet. It was Rebecca Vardy's account. Oh, wagon for Christie, girl, go on. I mean, there is tweets that burn and then there's Colleen Rooney this was one of those moments that literally it got everyone talking about it now we can't sit here and say whether this information was coming from Rebecca Martin's account or whatever but for Colleen to go to that much effort to block every single person on her Instagram stories and just leave one but one thing I really noticed about this, just look at the end. It's Rebecca Vardy's account. It's not Rebecca Vardy, it's Rebecca Vardy's account. Now that is where a good legal brain comes into mind because you can't get sued for that, Gil. You don't get sued for talking about someone's account. She did not say it was Rebecca Vardy, uh, but the, I loved it. And it just goes to show how powerful one tweet can be. Literally, how powerful one tweet can be. And obviously, as ever, the reaction was as expected. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, they should make a movie out of this and you should also be cast in the next James Bond as the first female spy. Could happen, could happen. Next up, Colleen coming for her like. <laughs> and possibly my favorite one, we're gonna have to make a documentary about this, aren't we? <laughs> yes, you are, darling. Yes, you are. Uh, but it just goes to show how one tweet can literally blow up into something absolutely crazy that everyone was talking about. Because years ago, we didn't have this, and you'd have to read this in the papers. Now the papers are taking Twitter's lead with their headlines. And I just think when you actually step back, what, 10, 15 years and actually think about that, no one ever thought that would be possible, that you would, the papers would be taking things from online to make their headlines, to sell those papers. It's crazy. Um, Another show that I love, and I know she did a talk as well, Michelle Visage. Let's move on to the next one. I love RuPaul's Drag Race. Got any Drag Race fans in? Six of us. Um, <laughs> where are the gays? Um, I love this, Trinity. So if you don't know who Trinity is, she's one of the queens on RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, and this is a tweet. You love Trinity? Love Trinity. Oh, so you know who Trinity is, but not Tiffany and David. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Get out! <laughs> I love this because this actually reminds me of when I started out in, in my career doing this. And I'm even talking before X Factor, like with, with bits and bobs that I do. Um, this is basically explaining there was a big bit of a hoo-ha with a tour that was going on. And it was talking about how people in the public eye or people on their way up get exploited in a lot of ways. And speaking firsthand, you do. And there's things that I did early in my career that there is no way I'd do now, whether it come down to taking the personal mick out of me or what I was being paid, what I wasn't being paid and things like that. And I've always been, I think, like to think a fair person. I think if you're doing the same job as someone else 
and you're there for the same amount of hours doing the same thing, you should be paid the same. And especially in the, in the industry I'm in, and I know there's a lot of talk about you know equal pay for women in television and equal pay for women in, in general in business. Um, and I am clearly fully support that, but I think it, it can be broader as well. And a lot of people, especially in my first couple of years, would literally rinse me for whatever they could get. And because I was so wanting to impress and so wanted to be in this industry, you feel like you're not forced to, because I've never been forced to do anything, but you feel like you have to do these things. So it goes from stupid things, like people who are quite high up in telly, whether it be the channel or whatever, saying, oh, we've got this charity event. And you go, right. It would be good if you would come along um, and do this. And you go, yeah, of course, it's for charity. Turns out it's not. It's their daughter's 21st birthday. And you go all the way there, and you, you do a three-hour meet and greet with all of the daughter's friends, things like that. And you sit there and go, okay, don't sack me. But you feel like you've got to do these sort of things. But one thing Trinity called out, which I've, I think is really, really great as well, because, you know, RuPaul's Drag Race, it's, it's pretty much taking over the world at the moment. But not everyone as you know, knows who these people are. People don't know who, who she is. And um, she's not been frightened to call out promoters and things like that that are taking advantage. And I do think it's really, really a shame, that especially when you start out in this industry, that you do get taken advantage of. Uh, taken advantage of. Um, but I just thought it was a tweet that I think from a personal level, um, and I've got an audience, uh, but from a personal level, talking about it, I just think it really struck a chord to me. And I thought, yeah, good for you, babes, because you know what? It, you should be getting paid to do the job that you're supposed to be doing. And we talk about equal pay and things like that. I genuinely think there should be a lot more parity, especially in television. Don't get me started, don't get in trouble. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I wanted to bring that up. And then this next person I want to talk about, let's move on to the next tweet. We all saw her probably on Armour Celeb, Caitlyn Jenner. Um, she announced to the world on Twitter that she was now Caitlyn Jenner. And I just wanted to pick that up because using Twitter for something so personal to announce, I just thought it was absolutely crazy that that's the first time we saw this Vanity Fair photo and things like that. And some people might say, oh, it's because of self-promotion. Oh, no, yeah, she's been paid to do this. She's been paid to do that. But you know what? We're here tonight talking about Twitter, and she did it on Twitter. And I just think it just goes to show, I mean, look, what is that? Like 355,000 likes, 210,000 retweets. It's ridiculous that you can literally write a few words on your mobile, on your laptop, and all of a sudden, the entire world knows your business. Yes, she's obviously a big celebrity, and everyone knows her from the Kardashians, but how one tweet can, I think, literally change a life, I think that's one of them because she literally changed her life. And I just think it was a good treat to talk about. Um, something a bit funny now, let's move on to this one. Where is it? Ed Balls, Ed Balls. <laughs> I'll be completely honest, yes we do. <laughs> we do do this. I always type in Rylan on Twitter and see what you're saying about me. <laughs> Whether you've tagged me or not, I'm not silly at Rylan or just Rylan and latest tweets, thank you very much. I know if I'm being stalked, just saw Rylan at Glasgow Air's airport buying a Tunnock's caramel bar. <laughs> <laughs> that was from Jean. Do you know, I, I love doing it. I really, because you, and I can predict it as well. So today, for instance, when I was walking through the airport, walking through, and you just know, at the corner of your eye, someone's either noticed you or wants to say hello to you, but you don't want to be that person like, oh, hello, like, because you think, what a mug. And, <laughs> and it turns out they were looking at the departure board, not your teeth. <laughs> and you're like, great. Um, but you just know, and I, I was with my friend as well earlier, and I said, I guarantee we'll get to the lounge bit and, and you will see, I'll search it, and that woman there would have tweeted something. She went, all right, all right, and lo and behold, she had tweeted something, saying, just seen, I, I don't know, I went to do it in a Scottish accent, and I don't know why. So I just seen Rylan at the airport, but you just know. But yeah, I, I like, I, I mean, poor Red Bulls for actually going out public for him. Um, but it did turn into a national holiday. Let's move on to the next one. He's been, he's been, and that is because every year Ed Balls, Ed Balls now tweets on the day, Ed Balls. <laughs> so it's that Father Christmas has come again. Uh, we absolutely love that. And then that then spirals out of control because it's on Twitter. We'll move on to the next one. 
people start updating Wikipedia pages. Leader Ed Balls. Ed Balls is Ed Balls. He was preceded by Ed Balls. He was succeeded by Ed Balls. It, it goes on, as you can imagine. And then lastly, David Halliwell says, happy hashtag Ed Balls Day. Went a bit too wild on Ed Balls Eve this year. So a day of quiet contemplation of the true meaning for me today. And uh, lastly, Charlie Proctor says, happy Ed Balls Day, everyone. I think for me today, it's about spending quality time with my family. Really doesn't matter if you believe he is real or not. <laughs> And a genuine Ed Balls cake, which I love. And I, for one, think we should all celebrate Happy Ed Balls Day. I really, really do. Uh, I'm coming right to the end now. Don't worry, you can go home soon. Um, a big moment for me, I think, actually, was a massive change in my career. It's something I originally said I definitely didn't want to do um, and was bullied a little bit by my management in the nicest possible way, saying, you really should do this. And I don't normally listen to them, but this time I did. And it was joining Radio 2. Um, and I always make the joke, but genuinely own it, that I'm an X Factor reject. <laughs> so at the time I was 30, I'm 31 now, and I got offered my own show on Radio 2, BBC Radio 2, like the biggest radio station in the country, you know, you've got legends like Tony Blackburn, you know, Steve Wright on there, Ken Bruce. Obviously, I was taken over from Zoe. And I was just like, is someone ill? <laughs> In more ways than one. <laughs> like, is it a gay box? They've got a tick? What is it? What is it they're trying to do? But genuinely, the, the head of Radio 2 was like, look, I've been watching you for years, and I just like the way you talk to people, and I think we'll give it a try. And... In radio, thank you, Karen. Uh, in radio, um, she goes everywhere I go. Um, <laughs> in radio, it's a bit like TV viewing figures. You get things called rajars. They're, they're your figures for what you get for your show. I didn't. I genuinely, when I joined Radio Two, didn't know people still listened to the radio unless they were just in their car and you know pop into the shops or Sainsbury's or something. Do you know what I mean? But people genuinely have it on all day. They love it. And something like Radio 2, they love. But at the same time, they don't like change. They, <laughs> Radio 2 listeners don't like change. But yeah, I joined Radio 2, and um, all my listening figures went up, and everything just sort of fell into place. And all of a sudden, I'm now a Radio 2 DJ with Tony Blackburn there, and this one there. And I'm like, there's a photo of Terry Wogan on the wall that frightens me, because I think, is he judging me? <laughs> um, and it's just crazy, but joining Radio 2 was probably the biggest career move for me ever because I automatically became, and I never thought I'd say this, BBC friendly, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <sighs> now, it took a lot. It took, it took me a long while to say it. No, it really, really has. And since then, it's just opened my audience up to a, a different amount of people and a completely different audience, which now shows on Twitter, because whenever I'm on the radio and I tweet, I want your stories or things like this, I will have your Jean from the Wirral and your Mary from Dagnum. Are you from the Wirral? Is your name Jean? Then shush. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Big up the Wirral. Um, but yeah, it, it, it just opened up a brand new audience for me. And I see that through Twitter, that there's more, a more diverse audience to get. And you know, you can do all your um, metrics and things like that about people. My audience is 98% female. <laughs> what a waste. <laughs> what a waste. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's why I wanted to talk about the Radio 2 uh, one. And um, my last tweet that I need to talk about, everyone always asks me, when you go home, because you are on every channel, on every show. It's just because I'm cheap, by the way. Um, you're on everything. Like, what do you do to relax? This is genuinely what I do to relax. <laughs> I have got the worst cleaning habit in the world to the point now where I've had to stop using things like bleach and have to use all this eco things because I'm literally knocking myself out <laughs> from literally bleaching things. This is, this is my life. My life is not glamorous. I don't have a cleaner. I don't do anything like that. I love doing it. I live a very lucky life with my job, and I get to come in places like this, and people clap me because they've been false to, because they've been dragged in, promised a free phone. And 
And I, I'll lap it up and I'll be like, thank you so much. And I'll wave like I'm Meghan and Harry. And then I'm like, right, going back to my normal life now. Hello, Canada. Um, <laughs> and people think, like genuinely people think, oh, I bet he's a right diva. Oh, I bet he goes home and he's like, you know, I want this and I drink champagne. No, darling, it's me and a minky cloth and a bottle of eco cleaner. <laughs> that is my life. But you know what? I would not want it any other way. I accidentally fell into this world. I love my job. I don't love everything that comes with it, but I'm very, very lucky to be doing the job that I'm doing. And uh, I'm very, very lucky that I've been here with you tonight. So I'd like to say thank you so much for listening. Um, it's been a pleasure talking to you about Twitter. So thank you so much. <laughs> and if you, need, if you need your house cleaning, give me a bell.